Digital Juice's Editor's Toolkits are collections of matching animations that help you turn your raw footage into finished programs ready for broadcast. Professional, exciting, and dynamic, the toolkits feature not just random animations, but coordinated sets that make screen layout and program design fast and fun. Editor's Toolkits come in two different versions, Standard and Pro. The basic difference is that the standard versions come with lots of different coordinated sets, while the Editor's Toolkit Pro volumes have deeper sets in HD and SD versions with more variations on a single theme, including print resolution graphics and specialized motion design elements. You get six backgrounds, two overlays, two lower thirds, two full screen wipes with matching sound effects, otherwise known as swipes, six very cool motion design elements, two layered juice drops at print resolutions, four mats and two transition wipes. All matching, all coordinated, all complete. The juicer lets you preview all of the animations over a broadband internet connection. But I personally prefer to install the product previews locally. Just insert the first DVD and, from the file menu, select Install Products. Let's start by clicking the Editor's Toolkit Product button. You can see here that there are two types of toolkits, Editor's Toolkit Standard and Editor's Toolkit Pro. They behave in essentially the same way. Let's click the Editor's Toolkit Pro button and then on a particular volume. The first thing you'll notice is that we have standard and high definition versions of these animations. They're essentially the same animations, so let's click the HD button to reveal all of the different types of animations that are available. Open a folder to see the actual animations, click to preview, and drag the ones that you like to the batch panel. Click this up one level button to go back. You can drag entire folders to the batch panel as well. Let's take a closer look at the Juice Drops still graphics, which are primarily designed for print applications, like DVD cases, informational booklets, and promotional pamphlets that go along with your complete video productions. They're also really fantastic in more complex composites and in more advanced applications like After Effects. Click the Load Layers button to preview the layers. The juicer is merely a browser for these juice drops, and you'll need to copy the layered PSD files off of the DVD discs in order to work with the layers. Okay, once you've created a batch list and found what you need, click the Render All button down here to copy all of the animations over to your hard disk. But before you render, you might want to click the Settings button to configure the output. This completely changes the mode of the juicer. In this mode, we can set the save location, configure the video and file format, and even create some pretty cool transformations and effects. Let's start by telling the juicer where we want our media to go. Click this menu triangle, then click Select Save Location and browse to a folder on your computer. If you have multiple items on your batch list, don't forget to click the menu triangle again and select Apply to All. If you don't, when you click the Render All button, only the selected animation will go to the chosen folder. All the rest will go to the default location, which is probably your desktop. This isn't a crisis, but it is pretty inconvenient. This happens because the Settings panel is media-specific, meaning that it changes depending on the type of media selected on the Batch panel. So animated backgrounds don't have or need alpha-type settings. But since they're generally used full screen, the canvas size is important. On the other hand, motion design elements do have alpha channel transparency, but are not designed to go full screen. So the frame size is less important, since you'll typically resize and reposition them in your editing application. Let's take a look at the more advanced settings you'll find in the canvas and output areas of the settings panel. Again, these are media dependent and since the editor's toolkits are rather diverse, the settings will change depending on the type of media we're working with. Broadly, however, we can divide all of the animations up into two types. Animations that cover the full screen, and animations that have some transparency in them so that they appear on top of your video. Let's start with the 
full screen animations without transparency, which means background animations, overlay mats, and transition wipes. All we really need to do here is match the canvas size to your editor's project settings. For standard definition NTSC video in the United States, for example, that would be 720 by 480, which we can select from this preset. For 1080i HD, the default preset is exactly what we need. These presets automatically set up the frame rate and pixel aspect ratio for us as well. Editor's Toolkit Pro elements come in both SD and HD resolutions, so make sure you configure your settings accordingly. In most cases, you're going to be able to select a preset that matches your project, whether that's standard definition, DVD widescreen, or some high definition format, such as 720p or 1080i. In the output area for background animations, the QT animation preset will serve us well. Almost all editing applications work very well with QuickTime MOV files, although there are other options you can select from the format list. Let's take a look at the full screen animations with transparency next, the full screen wipes, swipes, and the overlays. Once again, we'll want to match the frame size or canvas size to our editor's project settings. Unlike the backgrounds, however, full screen wipes depend on alpha channel transparency and overlay other video in your projects. Therefore, in the output area, you'll need to select a video format that supports alpha channels. And the QT animation with alpha preset is usually a good bet. It's increasingly rare, but some apps don't support QuickTime MOV files. And in that case, you can select AVI from the format menu, then click the format options button and select full frames uncompressed. For the alpha type, straight is fine. As you can see, some audio options also pop up when we start working with full screen wipes or swipes. There are two sound effect variations, for example. You can hear them by playing back the animation in the preview panel. In almost all cases, the DV quality preset under the audio section of the canvas area is what you need with a sample rate of 48 kilohertz and a bit depth of 16 bits. This is good for DVD video projects, standard definition and high definition projects, digital cable, and satellite television. In the output area, click the Track Options menu and choose Embed with Video. You can also render the animation and the sound effect to individual files and sync them up in your editing app manually if you prefer. The other type of animations in the toolkits are not full screen and also utilize alpha channel transparency since they appear on top of the video in your comps. These are the lower thirds and motion design elements. The output settings for these animations will remain the same. QT animation with alpha and alpha type straight. The canvas settings, however, don't need to conform to any particular video standard since the animations don't run full screen and don't need to fill the frame. Once you've configured the settings for a particular type of media, whether that's an animation or a sound or whatever, you'll probably want the same settings for that type of media in the future. The save as default for item is what you need. There are lots of different types of media, but this item will generally let you set it and forget it. When you're done, click the Render All button and insert the disks that the juicer asks you for. The high quality elements will render out in a few tens of minutes and will be ready to drop into your editing application to add that finished polish to any program. <laughs>